Hey everybody, welcome back to the Battlefront Survival Guide and another Battlefront 2 video. I just wanted to touch base with you real quick and let you know that I'm still here with plenty of content planned, but things have been a little bit different with the current quarantine situation. With my wife working from home now, it's a little bit more difficult for me to find the time to be productive and get this content produced. So I'm exploring different times and different days where I'm going to do that, trying to create a new routine so I can keep that content coming. So I just wanted to say thank you for sticking with me and let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the three main abilities of the officer class. The flash grenade splits into multiple fragments, blinding enemies and dealing a small amount of damage. Battle Command buffs the health of allies nearby. And Blaster Turret automatically fires on enemies. In addition to the era-specific default weapons, there are four additional weapons which can be earned through gameplay. The S5 pistol has a higher damage and range, but a slower rate of fire. The attachments include reduced recoil, dual zoom, and ion shot. The S5 is the hand cannon of the officer's loadout, a long-range pistol that does good damage at long range. In fact, with the dual zoom, you can keep opposing snipers at bay, but the scope glint also makes you a target. This is a great pistol if you can maximize headshots, and I always at least have reduced recoil equipped. Ion shot is very situational, but can be useful in taking out opposing turrets and damaging enemy vehicles. The Blurg 1120. This pistol has a two round burst, but the attachments are really where this pistol sings. They include reduced recoil, improved burst, and exploding shot. The Blurg may be the most popular of the officer pistols. The reduced recoil and improved burst make it an extremely deadly short range weapon. Maximize headshots with this weapon and you'll never use anything else. The exploding shot makes it extremely volatile and overheats quickly and the frequency with which you activate the cooling flush defeats any damage benefit you might receive. Not to be outdone is the SE-44C. It has slightly less damage than the default, but a fast rate of fire. But again, the attachments is where this gun becomes so good. Those include improved cooling, night vision, and rapid fire. The night vision attachment can be useful maybe on Endor at night, but I always run this gun with improved cooling and rapid fire. Rapid fire is a fully automatic setting. While not as precise as the Blurg, if you like to spray and pray a little more, this is the gun for you. Most officer mains run this or the Blurg pistol, and there's not much in between. Finally, the DL-18 has a lower damage, but a faster rate of fire. And the attachments include improved cooling, reduced spread, and repeating mode. While at first glance it may seem identical to the SE-44C with its repeating mode, it really works better as a fast fire rate single shot pistol. With the improved cooling and reduced spread, you can deal out a lot of damage quickly if you can prioritize headshots. If not, you're better off sticking with the Blurg or the SE-44C. Now let's talk about the star cards. Each class can equip three of these cards, which grant certain boosts or other weapons and equipment to your soldier. The boost cards include Officer's Presence, which reduces ally health regeneration delay up to 40%, Survivalist reduces your own health regeneration delay to 40%. Resourceful means your abilities have a shorter recharge time, down to 28%. Brawler, which grants you health on a melee kill, up to 100 Bodyguard, which grants you reduced damage from explosions and toxins, up to 40%. Expert Weapons Handling, which means your weapon cooling success states are longer, so if you activate the cooling flush in the blue or gold zones, those last up to 66% longer. Marksman. Your weapon heat will reset on defeating an enemy with a headshot. And Bounty Hunter means you gain battle points at an increased rate up to 20% faster. Now for the ability cards. First, replacing the flash grenade is the improved flash grenade with increased damage and upgrades increase the blast radius up to 5 meters. The homing shot, which is a tracking missile against infantry with reduced recharge time down to 25 seconds. and the diffuser, which defuses incoming projectiles like grenades. The defuse range can be increased to six meters. Replacing the blaster turret is the improved blaster turret with increased health and a decreased recharge time down to 13 seconds. 
The squad shield with protection against blasters and grenades. The shield health is upgradable from 1,000 to 1,400. And the disruption, which overheats nearby enemy blasters, defuses explosives, and temporarily disables turrets. Upgrades increase the range up to 20 meters. Finally, replacing the battle command is three different team buffs, which also work on yourself. Upgrades increase the radius to 9 meters. First is the Blast Command, which puts ally blasters into unlimited cooling mode for a limited time. Recharge Command, which instantly recharges ally abilities, and decreases the recharge delay for a limited time of those abilities. And Improved Battle Command, with increased range and a shorter recharge time. Now for the tactics. Your primary function as the officer should be self-evident just looking at the abilities. It's obvious that the kit lends itself to defending objectives with the turret, shield, diffuser, and disruptor, and buffing and protecting your squad. And in a game with good communication between squad mates who all play the objective the way they're supposed to, it works. However, this is Battlefront 2, where there is absolutely no communication unless you are in a party together. There are three different things you can do. The first thing is you can do your job. Put up your shield or blaster turret near the objective, buff the health of your nearby allies, and shoot any targets that show up. You can play with different cards like Diffuser and Disruptor, but they only work on a per-use basis. And with as many enemies and grenades as you'll encounter, you're bound to die in between recharges. If you really want to do your job well, the best card loadout is probably Officer's Presence, Survivalist, and Improved Battle Command. In fact, there's almost no scenario where I won't have Improved Battle Command equipped, because you can immediately increase your own health. The second thing you can do is be a killing machine. With the Blurg Pistol, the officer is as deadly as the best assault class player. Add to it the improved flash grenade and you have something nearly as good as the improved thermal detonator, except you can manually detonate it before or after it lands. So assuming you have improved battle command and improved flash grenade, I would add resourceful to decrease your own ability recharge times. The third thing you can do is, of course, play the hero. It's been this way since launch, and despite DICE's best attempts to balance battle point gain between classes, it's still the one to play if you want to get a hero early and often. With the Officer's Presence ability providing a passive boost to every ally, the Officer is earning battle points just by being near people. Add to it the improved battle command and bounty hunter cards, and you're on your way. The best strategy to level up quickly is to play a hybrid style of doing your job but also being a killing machine buff and support your teammates, but try to get as many kills around the objective as possible. My recommended loadout for this is Officer's Presence, Improved Battle Command, of course, and Improved Flash Grenade. The best mode to level up quickly, especially as a beginner or casual player, is Supremacy. First, area capture objectives are the easiest to play because all you have to do is be in the zone. You will gain more points and XP and get bonuses for kills while in the objective zone. Supremacy rounds last the longest of any mode, so you will very naturally get more kills and more XP, plus with enemy AI bots, you will win more 1v1 scenarios. Do damage to enemy vehicles and heroes as much as possible, and focus on any destructible objectives. These gain more points than against infantry, so keep that in mind. Lastly, keep an eye out for double and triple XP events. You will level up so much faster if you play more during those periods. Follow the Battlefront Survival Guide on Twitter at BattlefrontSG as well as EA Star Wars to keep abreast of these events. Now for your bonus tip, and that is to stack officers. One of the most ridiculous exploits that proves the law of unintended consequences is if a squad of four has four officers, or heck, even if a larger playgroup is all officers. With four officers, one running Improved Battle Command, one running Blast Command, and two running Recharge Command, there is no reason why they couldn't have unlimited weapon cooling, double health, and unlimited abilities the whole game. The two with Recharge Command can constantly recharge each other while recharging the Improved Battle Command and Blast Command, and you haven't lived until you've seen an entire game group of officers dropping 16 squad shields that never go away on every objective. Remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to make sure you receive more news and analysis such as this. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link in the channel description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.